Howdy. Welcome back to Dion Talk. On my channel, my goal is to help the average individual realize that you can reach financial freedom in 10 years or less and make work completely optional, even if you're not starting from the best position. So what I have today is my two friends, Michael Zuber from One Rental at a Time and Matt, the Lumberjack Landlord, two investors who, like myself, have reached financial freedom. Matt and I still work for today. <laughs> so someday we're going to quit our jobs. But not today. It's kind of like it's a race. We'll see how that goes. If you just met somebody who wasn't a real estate investor and they weren't watching your channel and the topic of retiring early came up, I'm going to go through both of you. Matt, what would you talk to that person about on reaching financial freedom and retiring early? How, how would you phrase that? I would send them to your your channel and have them watch a bunch of your videos. Um, in all honesty, I would, I would talk to them about, again, what's, what's your goal? How fast, you know, how fast do you want this to occur? Um, I think a lot of times people don't even have that in mind. Well, yesterday, well, yeah, sure. We don't want to stop working yesterday, but what's the first step that you're going to take aside from talking to me? What's the very first step that you're going to take? You have to start to consume. You have to start to read. You have to start to watch. Um, and I think that the unique opportunity that the, that the three of us didn't have is that there is a ton of content for people to go out there and watch, to understand exactly what that first step is going to be and then how to execute. So the first thing that I would probably tell them is, you know what, before you think that you're going to be the next real estate millionaire, watch a bunch of these videos and see how they make you feel. See if it's something that gets you excited or see if it's something that you're just like, Oh, this is just the same drudgery that my job is. Okay, that's probably not for you. So I would the first thing that I would do is I would literally point them to you guys. In fact, I do all the time on my Sunday live streams is these are the guys that you want to make sure that you're watching when you're learning to buy the property, understanding the property. I'm the guy that now you're a landlord. What do I do next? Yeah. Because that's the stuff that I focus on. We do all the deal stuff, but you know, again, that's, that's where I would take them is I think you guys do a phenomenal job. That's where I would send them. And I would say, this is the stuff you want to watch, see how it makes you feel. And then if it makes you feel like this is something I want to pursue, then that's, that's the direction that you need to go is keep on consuming that content to get, to build your knowledge up because it's not hard to get 90, to get a hundred percent smarter than 99% of the agents out there. Not hard. I love it. Um, Self-education. Yes. Direct them to, you've got to take this on yourself. And we, most of us, came from X number of years in an education where they said, here's what you're going to learn. This is what you have to learn to make it to the next level. But now we're out here in the finance world and we have to go, I have to find the data. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And Mike, how, how does that conversation go for you when you're not really focused on real estate, but they just go, I want to retire early. How would that look? Yeah, I probably still have this conversation or flavors of it a half a dozen times a week. So this is pretty common for me. Usually it starts with what I call discretionary income. I usually have to define it. Uh, most people don't really know what I'm talking about. So to define it here, it's okay. You, you make like, what do you make? I make 50 grand a year. Okay, great. Well, how much do you take home? 50 grand. No, you don't. You have taxes, 401k insurance. All right. You take home 40 grand. These are all just silly numbers. Okay, great. Now you make, so again, you don't make 50 grand. You actually make 40 grand, right? Because 40 grand pays your bills. Now let's talk about where that 40 grand goes. Rent, groceries, cars, blah, 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 blah. What do you got left? Some people it's negative, which is frightening. Some people it's close to zero. Let's say in this example, it's four grand, right? That's a year. So what is that a month? 300 bucks, 350 bucks a month, whatever it is. 333. 333. Thank you. And what I would tell them is, okay, so you have $333, which again, I define. What I define it is this $333. I call it freedom dollars. And here we're calling it discretion, discretionary money. You could light $333 on fire every month and nothing changes, right? Because sometimes you have this conversation with people and they suddenly remember more expenses. Oh, but wait, I give a donation of 50 bucks to this or that and I couldn't do that. Well, let's go back and look at your number again because again, you told me all these numbers and People don't understand what they spend. It drives me batshit crazy. So eventually we get to a number. Let's just call it $300 in this example. I say, great. Well, $300, that, that is your seed money. You now need to 
10x that seed money. Because again, in order to be financially free, you eventually have to buy assets, the assets that produce income, the income replaces your day job. Because right now you're selling your life one hour at a time and that sucks. So I say, okay, well, now we know a number, 300. We need to 10x that, 300. Congratulations. There are two ways you can do that. And I suggest you do both. One, make more money. Today's world, 3.6% unemployment, that probably means quit your job and go to a competitor. Instantly get a 10% bump. Instantly. Now your job is not to spend it. Your job is to live on the 40 that you had before. Everything you get in a raise falls to the bottom line, no exceptions. Two, you can get a side hustle. Find something that interests you. It's a hobby you've had for since you were a teenager. There is no, there are so many ways you can monetize what your love and passion is. It won't even feel like work if it is truly a hobby that you love. It could be playing some video game that I've never seen and selling the stuff on eBay as Dion taught us years ago. I had no idea you could do that. Apparently, people will pay for that stuff. I don't care what it is. Go do that. Two, we are going to audit your expenses. The biggest thing for Olivia and I to achieve where we are is we got we took out a scalpel to our expenses. We also increased our income, but we took a scalpel to our expenses because that number fell to the bottom line immediately. And then the last thing I close with, are you willing to do that for at least five years? 10 years to financial freedom? Awesome. The first five years suck. And I make it sound hard and ugly and painful and you're crawling through glass. Dion, most people don't want to do it. Most people would not do what Olivia and I did for two years. And Olivia and I did it for 15 years. Mm -hmm. You're soft. You're just soft. So that's where I talk. And I try to punch people in the face because I've had this conversation six times a week. I'm irritated at this point. I'm like, I've said this a thousand times. Here it is. And if I punch you in the face and you react appropriately, I'm like, cool, I'll give you more of my time. If you whimper up in a ball and walk away and say he's mean, then I save myself future conversations. So that's what I do pretty much all the time. Mike's not talking about a physical punch in the face. No, no. We'll be talking a physical punch in the face. (laughs) No, mine's a like wake you up. Like, yeah, yeah. No, I just wanted to make sure to clarify. Yeah, I'm not the physical one. That story is different from somebody who meets (laughs) meets with me. I want to shake you and yeah. yeah. So nice. what you're crying enough already. <laughs> what I like is the perspectives of the conversation, the way it goes with you guys, it's based on your personalities. You, you yeah. Matt, you, you uh, drop out of high school in ninth grade. So you ninth grade dropout. Mm-hmm. And so you're an autodidact. You, you think, how do you educate yourself to be successful at this? That's how you start. Mike in MBA, you know, your, your degrees in accounting, your like an engineer. Good enough. What's that? Economics, but that's okay. Economics, okay, great. See, uh, uneducated. Right. <laughs> right. Words are hard. So, but you're like an engineer. Here's how you would structure the way you look at this, mm-hmm. and here's how you would spreadsheet it, and there's how you would. This is the work you need to do. So, you, both of your perspectives is the same. Mine is, and I'm, I'm not like a teacher. Didn't go to college to become a teacher, but I run a CDL school. I like to teach, so I, I come from the teacher mentality. So, I ask a question. When, when the topic of retiring early comes up, I ask a, a leading question that lets me posit the theory that we might make this a mental shift for the person I'm talking to. I ask them, how much money would you need to retire? Because even in the fire community, most people think that's a number. A million, 10 million, 5 million. Uh, I, I've even heard people that, that have books out on you know the, the money investing from the 90s. They'll say, I think it would take $3 million to retire today. To retire early, to make work optional, you need to figure out your burn rate that you talked about, Mike. How much income would you need coming in every month that you don't have to sell your life for one hour at a time to make work optional? That's that's the, the concept of financial freedom. Mm-hmm. And then I break down the three different ways, the main paths that people use to reach financial freedom. Because we have the real estate perspective, but I don't know the perspective of the person we're talking to. So the first one I talk about is starting and growing a business and growing it to the point where someone else runs the day-to-day. So you're not needed there to run the business. The second is to invest in stocks. And I'll reference the Trinity study where if you invest 25 times your annual living expenses, you can, in most years, withdraw 4% and not touch the principal because you'll have an average 10% gain, making enough to make up for the 3% in normal inflation. So this year, it's more like the 3% rule than the 4% rule. And then you have enough to cover the taxes. Or the third route, buy and hold real estate, which created passive income. And then 
I kind of go the way it works for both of you. With Matt, I go, here's who I suggest to watch to educate yourself based on here's how the ones I would watch to grow a business. Here's the ones I would watch if I was going to invest in stocks or crypto or real estate. Because to me, while I chose real estate and we chose real estate and you guys have invested in stocks and I have not made that mistake. <laughs> I think it's important that people invest in what excites them. We're more likely to stick to a plan we're emotionally invested in. Don't invest on emotions. But if your emotions are also giving you buy-in to you want to run a business, you want to have employees, you want to do all that, you're going to do better at that than investing in stocks or real estate. And so three different perspectives on how to reach financial freedom from three perspectives on how we did it and how our personalities mixed into it. I know people are going to have questions because reaching financial freedom is really important. All three of us have done it. All three of us have made work optional. Matt, if they want to reach out with questions, how can they find you? Lumberjack Landlord on YouTube and Instagram, and as well as that, the three-hour live stream, typically 11.30 a.m. Eastern time on Sundays on my channel. Awesome. Someday, I need to get more into Instagram. Not today. <laughs> and Mike... If they want to reach out to you, how can they find you? Uh, one rental at a time is my handle. So YouTube, Instagram, website, books. And I go live 8 a.m. on Saturday. And a special shout out for this Saturday, 9 a.m. We're doing a Zoom call with my students, which I have no idea how it's going to work out. I hope it works, but uh, we're going to take a shot. I bought the technology. I might as well give it a shot. Have Matt on the phone. He's, he's, <laughs> he's who I would reach out to. <laughs> Thank you both. You guys have a week full of awesome. Until my next video, thanks for coming to my Dion talk. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.